March 18th, Mike Tyson, Ray the Ruddick, Ray the Ruddick dies. If he doesn't die, it doesn't count. If he's not dead, it doesn't count. Okay, so I'm with Mr. Maximum himself, Eddie Hearn, at the moment of his weigh-in. Uh, Eddie weigh-in just done, and it doesn't look good as well. A year on now since you signed Annie, isn't it? Mm -hmm. How do you track his progress now? What do you think he's done so far? Really good. I mean, he's moving. I never anticipated him to be at this level, fighting for titles after a year. You know, when you've got someone like Anthony Joshua, you see a lot of people getting to 15, 16 and 0 quite quickly. Um, with him, he stepped up, you know, fighters. In his eighth fight, he fought Matt Skelton. In his ninth fight, uh, he fought Constant. Sorry, seventh fight. Matt Scale and eight fight Constantine Erich, ninth fight Dennis Baktov. Mm. These are decent fighters for that level, but he's destroying them all. Yeah. And when he's doing that, you have to keep stepping him up. Mm. My worry is, is that he destroys Baktov, destroys Sprott, then where do you go? Well, the answer is Fury, Chisora, Price. So I think those fights realistically come next summer, but you know, ultimately you progress him. Uh, you know, you have to be, what I said yesterday, versatile in your progression, which means you take it fight by fight and you decide what's next for him after each fight. Has the hardest thing been like matchmaking for him? Obviously, the British public obviously want to see him with Vladimir straight away. Yeah, sure. Is it kind of hard to kind of? It is. Forward, you have to do the right thing. We've got something very, very special here, so you can't mess it up. You've got to be precise in what you're doing. Ultimately, myself and the team, we know what we're doing, and no disrespect to the people asking them to fight Vladimir and all that. They don't. Mm. So I understand what they want. They want the biggest fights possible, and they will happen. With Anthony Joshua, he will fight everybody in the heavyweight division in time. Um, but he's got to learn. He's got to progress at the right rate, and I think opponents like Baktov a perfect progression for him. This week, you've, you've also mentioned Price, you've mentioned Fury. How far realistically do you think he is away from those type of fighters? Probably just under 12 months. Again, it all depends. If he, if he smashes Baktov, if he smashes Sprott, you've probably got to say he's almost ready for those guys. If he struggles against one of those, then we'll slow him down. And they might be a year away. You know, they might be 18 months away, but right now, the way he's progressing, I think that ultimately, he could be six or seven months away from those kind of guys. Did you say it's a 2015 early minimum British title fight? Yeah, 2000, by the end of the summer, 2015, we want the British title. But one thing that's important, we're not going to wait around for that title and be messed around and let politics intervene his progression. You know, we're going to go and progress at the, the right pace and the right way, whichever route we take. You know, this is a WBC international title fight. This will give him a top 15. Mm. The WBC title is obviously a target for Anthony in time. So this is perfect for him. We'd love to win a British title. I think it's very important for British prospects to win that title, particularly heavyweights. You know, it's, it's, and, uh, but if it's not available or it's going to disrupt us, we will go down another route. Lee Selby obviously also on the card as well. He tweeted a couple of days ago that he has something to prove in this fight. Mm. Do you think he still has a lot to prove to the British public? Uh, yeah, I think he does because I think he's looked sensational and the last couple of fights he's looked just okay. Um, this is a perfect fight for Lee Selby. I've got to tell you, it's a very tough fight. Brunker's 27-0. He's absolutely relentless in his work rate. I think Lee Selby's going to have to stop him. It's tough to beat someone like Brunker on points. You know, he's just, he's relentless. I think this is the breakout fight for Lee Selby. You know, this is the one that really announces him on world level. Um, and again, perfect fight for him against Brunker. And I'm really looking forward to that. I think that's going to be fight of the night, to be honest with you. After the Fox Bros fight, everyone's talking about British super fights. A fight that probably wasn't mentioned around that time was Warrington Selby. Mm. Um, now that seems to be getting a lot of heat and uh, people want to see that fight. I mean, what, we're talking t late 2015? Yeah, right place, right time. I'd love it to be for a world title. You've yeah. seen the phenomenon that is Josh Warrington in Leeds last week. Unbelievable. And, and he's going to be a stadium fitter up there. He's going to be you know, a big, big star. Selby's already a quality fighter. Warrington's always just been one step behind. He's picked up his Commonwealth, British and European titles after Lee vacated them for him. Mm. And he's following him. So... Lee hopefully wins against Brunker tomorrow night. He gets the shot at Bradovic. He becomes world champion. And then Josh is going to keep following. And then we'll get that big domestic one for the IBF featherweight title. If I can ask you very quickly uh, about the Tony Belly and Nathan Cleverly pay per view announcement. Um, it was always going to be a pay per view fight, I thought, but it's got a lot of stick on the what, what do you say to those people that said it's not a pay per view fight? Well, I think the argument is whether it is a pay per view fight. And I'm not sure is the answer. It's a pay per view card. It's a pay per view night. It's not just the fight. I could have done that fight with a poor undercard because I wouldn't have had the money to put these guys on and people still would have moaned. Mm -hmm. This way you're talking about Tony Bellew against Nathan Cleverly which they're both 10 to 11 shots a complete 50-50 huge domestic fight which was a cracker last time. Mm -hmm. you know, you've got James Diao against Marco Antonio Paraban 
Um, you've got Scott Quigg defending his world title. You've got Jamie McDonnell against Alberto Ramos defending his world title. You've got Callum Smith in a world title eliminator. You've got Anthony Joshua against Michael Scott. You've got Stephen Smith in a huge night. And I've still got two really big fights to announce. This is a massive night. Six hours live of championship boxing. Huge domestic title fights, world title fights, big prospects. It can't be done without the pay-per-view model. And ultimately, and I, I said this in interview, it's going to be brutal. If you don't like it, or you don't think you're getting value for money, you won't buy it. But I'm telling you, you will get value for money. And if not, then give me some heat. You know what I mean? But until then, I haven't not delivered value on a pay-per-view show, and I don't intend to start. Do you think more people are looking at the fight as a pay-per-view rather than the card itself? Probably, yeah, yeah, probably. And they're getting confused, I think, to be honest yeah. with you. Um, when you sit down at 6 o'clock or whatever it is, and you watch six hours of championship boxing, including the cards, uh, the fights that I've just mentioned, if you honestly don't think they deliver, I think you're lying. Yeah. Because I know you pay for Sky, I know we've got bills to pay and all that, but ultimately, it's a Saturday night in. I mean, you could be down a pub doing 100 quid on beers and, you know, all sorts. So, I'm confident about the card. I think it's a wonderful night for British boxing. And ultimately, the proof will be in the pudding. People will make their mind up. But as I said, you either trust me or you don't. And I'm telling you, this is going to be a great card and a great night for British boxing. Final quick question. Thanks so much for this, Edison. Um, Carl Frotch, uh, how close are we to announcing who he fights maybe in January? I don't know. I mean, he's, he's, he hit the bag the other day for the first time. He said he enjoyed it and felt sharp. So, he'll definitely fight again. It's just a case of when. I think he wants James DeGale to look great against Perivan. That's a massive risk fight for DeGale, bearing in mind his position. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm funking for Digo against Frotch early next year, and I think that's going to continue to grow as the 22nd card grows closer to us. And finally, uh, how's Scott looking? He's doing really good. I mean, remarkable recovery. I was really worried about his future. He's walking, he's getting ready to start running. I think next couple of weeks we'll be in camp, and we'll announce his February fight soon. Thanks a lot, Eddie. No worries. Thank you.